What's going on guys? Welcome to Steve Does Stuff. I'm Steve and today we're gonna be doing some more truck stuff. You guys watched the last video. I walked through what causes the stain on the driver's door underneath your rear view mirror. No, that is all just aluminum that's falling apart. It's uh, it's gonna be a Ford truck in a few years. Uh, I've got it off, all that good stuff. If you want to see a detailed version of how to take the door panel off, check out the last video. Just I'm not gonna do it in this one. Uh, but today we are going to be replacing and fixing some of the rust under here. Now I've never done paint or body work or anything like that, so I don't know if I would take my advice if you know more. But in addition to fixing it we're gonna be putting on some Boost Auto Parts tow mirrors. I was kind of on the fence about these mirrors. Uh, I looked into factory replacements, but they're just gonna have the same issue anyway. I do tow a fair amount with this truck, my drift car, snowmobile trailers, all sorts of crazy shit. So I figured why not upgrade to tow mirrors? These guys, these are their Style 1 mirrors. They were about mm, 600 bucks shipped to Canada. Um, as far as I can tell, they've taken factory GMT 900 tow mirrors and just made a custom plate that adapts it to the Colorado Canyon trucks. So today I'm going to be addressing some of the rust on this one, painting that and installing those puppies over there. Taking a quick look at the paint here. All of this is all rusty and I have even popped off this trim piece right here just to see how far back it goes. It's pretty nasty under here. I'm gonna try and clean up as best I can. This is by far the worst area. This is a 2016 GMC Canyon. It's got about 213,000 kilometers on it. But that bottom part where the mirror body was attached here, where it was the worst, is where the majority of our pain and suffering is coming from. So basically everything here down, even kind of bubbling down onto the door. What's interesting is it has kind of spread to back here, which is why I took this trim piece off. So uh, there's no real good way to do this other than I am going to basically tape off an area here, grind this all down, hit it with some rust converter, primer, paint, clear it, and then obviously try not to get paint all over the truck or inside of it. So I'm gonna be a little bit interesting and outside of my comfort zone. So you guys are gonna have to uh, excuse the horrible tape job, but I just kind of wanted to define some of the area which I'm gonna be dealing with today. Um, I'm hoping that it's gonna be way less than this, but I'm essentially gonna take my pick and try and peel off the, the paint to expose this crappy metal. Like I said before, I'm not a bodywork guy. Um, spray paint, uh, I'll get like a, I don't know, like a five out of 10 when it comes to spray painting. So this, because it's gonna be mostly behind the mirror body, I mean, this very small part is gonna be exposed, but the mirror is sitting there. I don't think it's gonna drive me nuts. I really hope so. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and pick uh, this away and see what we can find underneath. Really not horrible. Uh, you know, a little bit bigger than a golf ball, but not also great for like a six year old truck. Might start slowly with just uh, with a little bit of sandpaper by hand first, because I really don't want this to snowball. So for this, using 150 grit, probably could have gone lower, but Definitely in a little bit better spot now. I've taken it down. There's no real pitting here, but it's not too bad. I focused on the edges here just to try and make sure that I'm down to a place that has uh, no corrosion underneath of it. It feels solid. I have worked the edges pretty hard, so I don't think there's gonna be any paint flaking up. Now, like I said before, my spray painting has been average at best, but kind of done my best to, it was a combination of butcher paper, which I have for briskets, a uh, couple dog towels and just try and cover this area up as much as I can. I mean, as long as it doesn't get too windy, I think we should be all right with this, fellas. As far as what we're gonna be using, going on to the Duplicolor Perfect Match. This is supposed to be GBA GM Black. So good there. And then just cause I'm a fancy guy, we're gonna hit it with some protective clear coat. I know there's gonna be a line there, a tape line. There's nothing I can do about it. I might try and compound it to blend it in a little bit, but the point of this is just stop the rust. It's not gonna look pretty, but it's gonna look better. Got the first coat of paint down and it's uh, not going as good as I wanted it to, but well, okay, we'll keep going. Uh, I was looking over these guys while I was painting and I noticed that these pieces, which is what I imagine Boost Auto Parts manufacturers, are aluminum. 
I believe these are supposed to be plastic in the GM original ones for the trucks that actually take these tow mirrors. So what I think Boost Auto Parts has done is they have designed this piece to made up with the factory GM mirror. And that's all good and fine, but this is all aluminum, all right here. The outside is painted pretty well, uh, but the inside you can see a uh, little lackadaisical. And well, we all know what happens when you don't take care of aluminum and it gets exposed to salt and crap. Uh, we're gonna end up basically right back where we were. So while I am painting the truck, slowly but surely, uh, with, you know, mixed success. I am also just gonna spray a couple coats on the inside here to make sure they're well coated. I've covered up all the threads to make sure they don't get all messed up. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go do that for a little while. So we're, I don't know, three coats in. I'm probably gonna give this four to five coats. Backs of the mirrors are starting to look much more even, a lot better coverage on them, uh, but it's slow going. Gotta wait 10 minutes between coats as per the can. So while I'm kind of painting and squirreling around and everything like that, I am gonna start on the passenger side. Passenger side's got the exact same procedure as the driver side with the door panel. I mean, I guess it's time for a montage. Passenger side is done. This area is in much better shape. For those of you who have never done this before or a little intimidated about it, it's really not that hard. I did that in less than 10 minutes. Now, it's the third time I've done it, but you just gotta not be afraid to, you know, kind of break some stuff. As long as it's warm out, I can assure you, you won't. Here's what we're dealing with. This is our passenger side mirror. This is our driver's side mirror. Let's take a look at them in comparison to one another. So this is the first time that I have ever had both the driver and the passenger mirror off. Never taken the passenger mirror off because everything I read online is that this body should be plastic on this one. So let's see if they're right. Would you look at that? It is plastic. So look at the difference between these. This plastic one after basically almost six years, 213,000 kilometers, perfect shape. This guy, after fixing it once already, is destroyed. I have no idea why they make this one plastic and this one aluminum, but like I said before, if you are living in Rust Belt states or Canada, this is gonna be a problem for you. Like, this is gonna be a big, big problem. And not only that, if you're living in these states, Jam, what's the deal with these not being heated? Quick little watch out uh, once you have the door panels off. I ran into this on the passenger side. These two little clips here are the two seven millimeter screws from the armrest. And in order to attach to the door, they use these kind of fun little clips that General Motors loves to use. And for whatever reason, this, uh, this clip does not want to stay in position. So I'm gonna take it out, show you guys how to kind of fix on it so it stays in place because that is not gonna attach anything and I'm not putting this thing back together half-assedly. All I did to this clip was just put it in the vise to try and close that gap a little bit more. Sure, this side goes towards the inside of the door. All three of these kind of like uh, washer bolt type dealios, they're all 10 millimeters, so it's an easy. All three of these guys are tightened down. You're gonna wanna go ahead and put the trim on that apparently is bugger to get back on, but honestly, it doesn't look that crazy. The only thing, <laughs> it's, it's kind of funny how low it is. It's like, you know, normally HD trucks you know, they're up here, but it is kind of funny how low this thing is, but I don't know, it's, it doesn't look crazy. Now from the back, it's, uh, you know, it definitely looks a little bit bigger. It's a better replacement than going with the factory one. I'm thinking that this area here, just because this is so low, I think it'll 
cover whatever god awful thing I come up with quite nicely. My expectations are, you know, tempered. So uh, things are coming along. I don't think I'll ever be able to build that up, but you know, we'll see. Now that we got our mirror back on, it's time to put the door panel back on. And I made this mistake when I first did this back in the early pandy days, but I tried to just smack it back on and you cannot do that. So this is the driver door right here. You can see it's got this uh, window liner, or whatever trim piece. It's kind of just flopping in the wind here. You have to remove this piece before you put it back on the door. Uh, it is held in place by five of these clips. They slot into the door here, 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 and here. You can see yeah, it's a little, little rough with that one, but basically you need to pop the trim piece off. You can fully remove the actual felt trim piece from there, it's no big deal. And these little punch outs on the door in the stamped sheet metal, you need to take this area of the clip, slide that back into place. You need to do that on all of them. It, you can't mess it up. There'll be witness marks. There's only five slots for that. Then it's time to put this guy back on. So it does go like this. The felt has to face in towards the window. Let's go on the other side of this. And essentially it'll fit down in this little groove right here. So this part right here fits in this groove. You'll see this little cutout part. That is for right there. Shoot. sandwich this between the door and this clip so this will go down first kind of tuck up back and under you can see it just really nicely just slots down in there and that's that we have it sitting down nice and even just like it was before if you don't do that it's over you will not get this thing back on you'll be up and down and left and right and everything when you take the trim piece off, do it like this. It allows the whole door panel to just right back on with the exception of getting this guy lined up. Obviously, when you're connecting your door panel, do not forget to attach all of these things. The very first one, that's door lock and unlock. Middle one, that is your window switches. This last guy right here, that's how you open the door. Okay, I would say that is probably five coats of paint, four coats of clear. There's no denying it's bad. Uh, it's bad. Fortunately, most of this is gonna be covered up. So this is a pretty, pretty hard tape line, you can see. It's all fish eye, it's gross, it's not very nice. It is dry, I've let it dry for about a half an hour. Uh, I think once it's dried for a few days, I'm gonna come back and try and blend this line in a little bit more with the mirror on. But this is a massive improvement. And like I said, it's gonna save that door, uh, which is good. First luck with the driver's side on. Eh, it's not bad. You really can't notice it from say four or five feet away. I mean, obviously if you're looking for it there, but I mean, that is a significant improvement. Again, these things don't look that out of place. They just are kind of funny how low they are, but so far so good. A quick watch out with the excess of cable that they are gonna provide you. I basically just zip tie it up right there. You wanna make sure that it is not laying over this hole right here. This is a locator hole for the door card. So just make sure you're getting rid of the excess. Kind of like that. Now it is time for the reassemble.
So I fired the truck up and uh, all the mirrors work. They articulate left and right, no problem, and turned on the defrost and they definitely work. They got pretty, pretty hot pretty fast and just wanted to show you, it's a lot different than the factory mirrors. I'm sure I'll be able to see a ton more. It's just a little bit to get used to. So this is essentially my driving position. It's nice to have that little split window mirror. I'm sure this will make checking your blind spot way easier. Uh, articulation works great. And I'm just trying to figure out, you know, what what is the best position for it, but I don't know, it's, I like them so far. But that, I don't hate it. It's funny seeing it next to a bigger truck with it. I don't know, it looks good. I think that's gonna do it for this episode of Steve Does Stuff, guys. Mirrors are on, rust is fixed. I hope this helps somebody out there. Thanks for watching, see you next time.